All right, open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 2. I'm going to speak tonight on stirring, actually verse 1, stirring up your pure minds. Stirring up your pure minds. Verse 1 of 2 Peter chapter 3, Paul writes, or Peter writes, excuse me, Paul could be writing for Peter, right? So anyway, Peter is writing, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up, your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world then was that, was, that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Now look at this. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, I mean right here, we're on that planet right now, by the same word, the same word which spoke and brought the flood and destroyed the earth by water, that same word has kept in store that those heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This world has no idea the judgment that is coming just like in Noah's day, they had no idea about the judgment that was coming. They had never seen water from the sky. They had never seen the fountains of the deep. We saw a little foretaste of that with Sandy. And it, it, is, it is horrible. It is bad. It is unbelievable uh, what devastation that that storm did. But it's nothing like the flood. And it's going to be nothing like the coming of the Lord and what God is going to do to judge this world of the, the ungodly and, and men in, in, that are in perdition. Verse 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So what he's stressing here is don't think it's very long. Because even in, from, from God's perspective, on God's timetable, a thousand years is like that, because God's an eternal being. So to God, it's not a big deal. We are finite. So we only look at time by time. God is not bound by time. And so we think it's forever. You know, people say all the time, well, I just can't wait to get married. And they just think it's never going to happen. And then they get married, and then they wish it was soon going to end, okay? Um, we, we can't wait. We just are impatient people. We're always looking and it just, and it just seems like, it's, oh, it's taking just forever. You know, we can't, we stand in line and we wait. Is it ever going to, you know, are they ever going to get to me? And we just, that's the kind of people that we are. And things feel forever. And, and even Christian people today have no patience. They have no waiting, no long suffering with God. Now listen, verse 9, God is very clear. He says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. If you ever have entered in, ha, had it enter into your mind that, that God may not carry through, put that out of your mind. Because the Bible says in verse 9, but it is long, but it's long suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Then verse 10. He affirms, reaffirms the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Now, this is not the rapture. This is in flaming fire taking vengeance upon them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be judged with everlasting fire from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. He's coming in judgment. That's what the day of the Lord is all about. And in verse 11, he says... I'm sorry, in verse 10 he says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Leave your finger there and let's, let's read how Paul put it. 
um, because he uses a similar expression in the book of 1 Thessalonians in chapter number 5. So Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians. And go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Verse 5, or chapter 5, verse 1, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. You already know these things. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a what? Thief in the night. Exactly what Peter was saying. All of the apostles, when they preached and they taught eschatology, which we are so enamored with, we think that we, you know, we have the handle on when the Lord's going to come. We got it all figured out. Look, they were focused on getting people saved, not, pre not predicting dates. They were worried about what God was concerned about and getting themselves right, ready to meet God. And it's time for our church, it's time for this nation, it's time for God's people to wake up and realize that we have a God that is powerful and a God that is beyond any human imagination. And when He comes, He is going to absolutely burn up everything that, that, that relates to our existence. We're so proud in this world. We think we are so smart and everybody should look to us and we're, we're proud about our records and we're proud about all of our accomplishments and we're proud of our houses and we're proud of this. All of the accomplishments and God is not impressed. You know why? Because it's not about us. It's about glorifying Him and praising Him in our life. And so in one fell swoop, God is going to wipe out everything that has to do with man. And he's going to start fresh with a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Not wherein dwelleth sin. Amen. And that's where we're going to live forever. Amen. And so verse 11 says, seeing then. Now let's, let me back up to verse 10. I want you to see how God is going to take down this world. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. People are not going to expect it. You know what? People who are robbed, uh, one of our firefighters, a lieutenant, good friend, um, godly man, he and his wife have been through a whole lot, went on vacation, came back, it was about two months ago, came back, and their house was ransacked, they felt so violated, and, and this was the second time it happened in that community. That's the last thing they thought was going to happen when they got home. And yet you feel so violent. But, you know, they, they, never, they never dreamed it would happen. And especially again. So people are not going to be ready. They're not going to be expecting it. But it's coming, folks. And it's coming a whole lot sooner than people can, uh, can understand. Verse 10 says that in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Boom! Gone. Now you talk about power. We, don't, we, we have never seen in this world anything like that. This is more catastrophic than the flood ever was. The flood was on the earth for over almost a year. This is instant. The, the heavens are going to vanish. So... This idea that we're all going to be on some planet, and we, you know, when people that are buying planets for themselves to live on one day, is such a bunch of foolishness. How, how duped they're going to feel when they stand before God only to, to realize that God's burnt their planet up and they've paid hundreds, hundreds and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars for their planet, and it isn't there anymore. Verse 11 continues and says, uh, verse 10 continues and says, the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt or burned up. Now, there, you know, I've, I, I, years ago, my pastor uh, that I, I was saved under, Dr. Jack Hiles, he used to, all, he used to make the statement that when he got, uh, when, when, the new, when the new world came, 
that he wanted to be the governor of Hammond. Now that's kind of that's kind of lowered expectations to me. I, you know, I, that's the last place I want to be the governor. But the or, or the I mean, not, uh, the mayor of 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 Hammond is what he said. I don't want to be a mayor. I don't want to have any part of this world because I don't want to live here. I don't want to be on this planet and re be reminded of my sin. I don't want to be on this planet with men and women who are sinners who are, and live that way eternally. God is going to erase it from our memory and erase it from time. There will be nothing left and nothing to remember. It will be similar to what we are seeing and with, with Hurricane Sandy. Now, folks, th those people are suffering big time. Um, there, is a, there was a whole community, a hundred homes, gone in a fire. It started, and the, and the hurricane continued to feed it, and those people came back to nothing. It looked like a war zone. There was nothing. And that's what, on the interviews that you see on the television, what most people are saying, I have nothing left. No memories. They can't find books, pictures. Any kind of paraphernalia, it's gone. It's either been swept out to sea. One family, <clears throat> they, they experienced Irene. And they came back to find everything looted out of their house. So they didn't heed the warning of the authorities. And they decided to stay. The, the daughter and the wife, or what, the daughter and I think one, a son, they were carried out to sea. The father as well. Only one out of four survived, and everything was gone. Tragic. But there will be nothing. There won't, there won't be a crumb left. It will be gone. Why? Because God doesn't, he, he's not interested in the works of men. He's interested in his work. Amen. The only remembrance we are going to have when we get to heaven of this earth is Jesus. Calvary. Him dying on that cross and those nail scars that we see. But past that, folks, there's nothing else to be all hopped up on. Because God is going to change everything. And so, because of this, he says in verse 11, Sing then that all these things shall be dissolved. You know what dissolve? My, my, my dad, when I think of dissolving, I think of Alka-Seltzer. I, I don't know why. That is the nastiest stuff. Any of you ever tasted it? Any of you teenagers? That's, it's a long, really. You've had Alka-Seltzer. I cannot believe that. That was, a, I tried it just because, just you know, my dad, you know, that's, he, he loved, you know, Alka-Seltzer, was, that was like his thumbs. And I, and I tried that one. That is the most disgusting stuff. But you take that tablet, and you put it in there, and it's just minutes, and it's gone, and there's nothing left. You can't, you can't even see it. That's what it's going to be like. Everything in this world and everything in this universe are going to be dissolved. But that is the power of God. And verse 12 says, seeing, or 11 says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holiness and godliness? Do you see the urgency of living a holy life? Do you, do you see the importance of being different? I beat this drum and beat this drum for 35 years. And, I, and, and people don't get it. They don't understand the value of being different in this world, being holy, and be, and rather than unholy. And that holiness involves separation. It's coming out from among them. Who's them? The world. Sinners. Coming out from them and being different, being holy. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing means we're to be godly. We're to be, not, we, we'll never be sinless, but we're to sin less. And we're to be different people than 
the average person out there. And as we are different people, we're going to be pleasing to God. And, we're, and it's going to be visible. We are in an election. I, I, we've already cast our vote. And I hope you've cast yours. And I, and I hope you've thought about what this all means in the grand scheme of things. I don't know what's going to happen. And you know what? God's still on the throne. I hope and pray that at least we get an administration or we get some change that is going to allow us to be able to continue to proclaim the gospel without persecution. That's my prayer. I, I just feel like that we in, in our country, uh, it would be nice to be able to have a little more time. But that's God's business. What God is saying to us is that we need to be prepared and we need to understand how austere and how powerful that God is and how serious business this is of serving God. That it, it, this, is not, this is not a game. You know, Hollywood has come up with all kinds of movies. Independence Day. They're all concerned that aliens are going to come and they're going to take us all up in their spaceships and we're going to become like zombies and they're going to eat our brains out like we have a brain if we even go and we believe that stuff. And that they're going to, you know, 